Ferrari have just announced the F80 as a successor to the outgoing V12 LaFerrari and as the next addition to the Ferrari Halo supercar range Big 5. Ferrari enthusiasts are very concerned about this because this means that the F80 will implement a V6 twin turbo hybrid power plant and this begs the question is a V6 hybrid power plant a worthy successor to the outgoing naturally aspirated V12 LaFerrari and in turn a worthy addition to the Ferrari Halo Big 5. Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. Ferrari have based the F80 on the two times Le Mans winning 499P, itself based on a 3 litre twin turbo V6 hybrid architecture producing 1000 brake horsepower. The F80 has some impressive performance metrics. It has 1200 brake horsepower split between 900 brake horsepower on the combustion engine and 300 brake horsepower across an 800 volt hybrid system. The hybrid system is made up of an electric motor integrated in with the combustion engine to provide torque fill, two electric motors on the front axle, one on each wheel, and also two 48 volt electric motors, one on each turbo, to reduce turbo lag. The 3 litre twin turbo V6 power plant will rocket the F80 from 0 to 62 in 2.15 seconds with a top speed of 217 miles per hour. That 217 miles per hour is probably substantially limited by the extensive amount of downforce that is generated at 250 kilometers per hour which is 1050 kilograms. That split between 590 kilograms on across the rear wing and 460 kilograms across the aerodynamic under tray and the front S duct. The F80 weighs 1525 kilograms so it's no lightweight and only 799 F80s will ever be made and they've already all been allocated. The F80 also has some interesting styling cues. When you're looking at the front you can see it definitely has leanings towards the 12 cylindric and the 365 which of course was known as the Daytona. You can see by this black strip across the front covering the headlights very very similar to the 12 cylindri. The rest of the styling is very, very similar to the 499P, as you'd expect, being based substantially on that Le Mans winning car. The styling has really set people apart because many were expecting it to be quite curvaceous. When you, when you consider how the LaFerrari was styled, the F80 is a substantial separation away from the LaFerrari, but that's not a bad thing. The big halo Ferrari supercars tend to set themselves for a, as, a, as a new baseline going forwards. They don't hark on back to the, to the legacy history much. They try and set a new blueprint for the future cars. And they're very much doing this with the F80, with its leanings on the 499P. Now, we can't talk about the F80 without also considering its competitors, which are the McLaren W1, previously codenamed the P18, and the Porsche Mission X. These three cars make up the second coming of the Holy Trinity. The first Holy Trinity being, of course, the Porsche 918, the McLaren P1, and the Ferrari LaFerrari. This now is a new era that we're moving into with the second coming of the Holy Trinity. The McLaren W1 itself has some impressive performance statistics. 1,258 brake horsepower, 0-62 in 2.7 seconds, with a top speed, again, similar to the F80, of 217 miles per hour. Here again, probably limited by the fact that it produces 1,000 kilograms of downforce. What is most interesting when comparing the W1 though with the F80 is the fact that the W1 has a brake horsepower per ton of 899 brake horsepower, whereas the F80 has 787 brake horsepower per ton. That is 112 brake horsepower per ton more for the W1, and yet it's slower 0 to 62? Hmm, raises a question in my mind there. Were the figures fiddled a bit, little bit? Because the McLaren W1 was released first before the F80. 
Did Ferrari fiddle those figures to make the Ferrari F80 look a bit better? Don't know. I'll leave it up to you to decide. The third Halo supercar in the Holy Trinity will be the Porsche Mission X. Now there isn't that much to say about the Mission X to be honest because Porsche released a prototype for the Mission X around 12 months ago, heavily intimating that it would be based around a full EV system. However, they didn't define that specifically. Therefore, they can still change it. And I suspect now that the, the McLaren W1 and the Ferrari F80 have been released with their twin turbo hybrid power plants, I suspect that Porsche may revisit that and they may incorporate now some sort of a hybrid system, therefore a combustion engine with electrical hybrid system. Otherwise, I cannot see those Mission X's selling very well when compared against the F80 and the W1. And it really wouldn't make up a true second Holy Trinity. It just wouldn't be right with a full EV incorporated in that second Holy Trinity. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. So the Ferrari F80 joins the Halo Supercar Big Five. Now, of course, the Halo Big Six, which consists of the Ferrari 288 GTO, the F40, the F50, the Ferrari Enzo, and the La Ferrari, and of course now the F80. And also, of course, the F80 now joins the second Holy Trinity alongside the McLaren W1 and the Porsche Mission X. The Porsche Mission X apparently will know more in around a year's time what exactly is going to be released for the Porsche Mission X. It's interesting though when comparing the Ferrari F80 with the McLaren W1. Only 399 of the McLaren W1s will ever be made and the W1 is retailing at around 2 million plus options whereas the Ferrari F80 is retailing around 3 million plus options so that's a million more for the Ferrari F80 plus 799 will be made. So that's twice the W1 allocation. Yet you can absolutely guarantee that Ferrari F80 will increase substantially more in value than the McLaren W1. That's brand strength for you. Now it's very important to remember that Ferrari is all about the racing. That's exactly the reason why Enzo Ferrari put in place the supercar production range starting from the 125s it was all to support racing therefore the lineage with a two times le mans winning hypercar 499p race car is very much an accurate way forward if they were carry on, going to carry on and in effect reinvent the la ferrari with another v12 in the a in the f80 and style it differently to the 499p this wouldn't be starting a new blueprint it wouldn't be moving forwards in effect they'd be sitting back on their laurels it could be argued that the enzo and the la ferrari aren't really befitting of a halo supercar range whereas the 499p is a much more befitting to be in that in that in that halo supercar top six than ever the enzo and the la ferrari were when you consider that people are up in arms with the fact that the f80 has a twin turbo v6 hybrid system and their perception is of course that the halo supercar range has always had v12s so, well that's not the case it's only the last three models in effect the enzo the f50 and the la ferrari that were v12s the first two models the 288 gto and the f40 were based on twin turbo v8s so they weren't all v12s it is in effect ferrari are keeping fit to their process to their plan to move forward to set a new blueprint a new template for the future going forward and people are probably thinking well why have they implemented a v12 in the 12 cylindry and not in the f80 why are they in, why are they implementing a twin turbo v6 in the f80 well firstly the 12 cylindry is going to sell in a lot more higher volumes than ever the f80 will only 799 of the f80 will ever be made whereas there's no limit on the 12 cylindry and of course yes that's going to generate a lot more money but again if they implement a v12 in the f80 it's not moving the brand forwards it's not really a halo supercar it's not befitting of the halo supercar range so it's not setting a new blueprint to move ferrari forwards in that area so in many ways 
you have to take your hat off to Ferrari. They're really keeping to their process of setting a new blueprint going forward. And yes, they're disregarding what a lot of people are thinking that a V12 should exist in the F80. But when has Ferrari ever worried about what its public think? When has Ferrari ever worried about its customer base to that extent? They just don't. They do what they think is right and to hell with their customer base and the customer base will just buy it. And that is borne out by the fact that all 799 of those F80s were sold out straight away. Now, Cynic might believe that Ferrari basing the F80 on the two-time Le Mans winning 499P is an excuse to move the brand forward in a different direction, introducing more EV due to the legislation in 2030. However, you've got to think, well, when did Ferrari make this decision? The 296 platform, which the twin turbo V6 hybrid is based on really, which the 499P was based on, was probably developed around 2020. So around, it was developed around COVID times. It's perceivable that this direction was decided way back in 2020 when the 296 was in production or when the 296 was about to go into production because the 296 platform is what the 499p is based on in effect the 296 gt3 and of course the f80 is based on the 499p platform so you could think that ferrari base in the f80 on the 499p is purely using as an excuse they've had the success with le mans so it makes a fantastic excuse for them to then move forward and generate the f80 based purely on the 499p on the success of the 499p it's a great excuse but i don't think that's the case as I said earlier, I very much believe that Ferrari were moving forwards with a V6 twin turbo hybrid platform, um, basing it on the 499P and basing the styling and, and specifically the aerodynamics on the 499P because Ferrari is all about the racing. Again, this is why Enzo put together the supercar production range, starting off with the 125S. It was all to do with the racing to fund their racing progress. So Ferrari technically is keeping to their plan. They are keeping to their business plan and their process of creating a new blueprint and a whole new architecture for the future. And that is what the F80 is providing. And I applaud that. I don't necessarily like the F80 styling, if I've got to admit it. I'm not, I'm not that too enamored with it. It probably will grow on me. As a lot of Ferrari Halo cars do, I, I'm sure the F80 will grow on me, but at the moment I'm not too enamored with it. But that's not the point. The whole point is that Ferrari were building a whole new blueprint for the future. And that is exactly what the F80 provides.